You mentioned eating the uh, collagenous regions of meat. You said eat the joint capsule, but mm. isn't that bone? Question mark. Please share a few examples of of these regions. Yeah. So I think what they were referring to is I know in uh, previous Q and A's or in videos I've talked about when you look at a chicken wing. So you know a lot of people order chicken wings. You know I I enjoy chicken wings. You probably do as as well, Hampton. But the actual meat, the protein component of the chicken wing is not the healthiest component. It's actually within the joint capsule, right? So when you actually, the joint capsule itself is full of collagenous proteins that are really healthy for the body. And so um, there is, the joint is kind of like uh, a transition point between bone and muscle. So that's where the tendon, the ligaments are, the tendon connects the muscle to the bone and the ligaments connect bone to bone basically. And so they're all kind of surrounding this, this joint and it's, it's basically, you know, like the little legs for the chicken. So, uh, it's a ball and socket joint and it is definitely edible. Okay. It's a little bit more crunchy, obviously it's more crunchy than meat, but it's definitely edible. And so if you have healthy working teeth, I mean, you can easily chew it and, and crunch it down. Now, obviously there's a component of the bone that's, you know, very rich in calcium that, that you're going to have a hard time with unless you boil it down significantly, which you could, if you're making chicken soup or something like that, um, you can actually boil it down. You can actually eat a lot of these, you know, bones that you would think are unedible. In fact, our ancestors, many of them would actually do that. That's how they make the bones and the minerals in the bones and the proteins in the bones edible is they would boil it down, uh, in water. And that's, you know, you can get, you, you free up all those, uh, key nutrients that are in there. However, if you're just eating chicken wings, just take a, a, a you know, a, a munch out of the, uh, synovial joint, the head of it. And you're going to get a lot of these collagenous proteins plus inside of there, inside the bone. Once you, once you take off the joint capsule, that's where the bone marrow is. So the bone marrow is on the inside of the, the long bone. And so you, then you go ahead and you just kind of suck at it and you'll get some of that bone marrow out. And it doesn't taste bad. It actually tastes quite good. And that's where you get the most nutrients when you're consuming something like chicken wings. There you go. There's there's there the go. answer. Um, yeah, I, I guess I normally just get it from we cook bone broth or meat stock or whatever, and you know it it, it infuses into the to the water. Um, and yeah, sometimes I'll chew on it. But I guess don't you know? Yeah, getting it in is great, but we're not saying like chomp down and try to, you know, eat half of the chicken wing and half, just nibble on it to taste, get some of that in your mouth. You're going to, it's, you'll be benefit. You'll get more of the nutrients is what we're, what we're saying here. And if you want to eat it, go for it. Right. You know? Yeah. And actually, <laughs> actually chewing on kind of the gelatinous regions, this is something our ancestors did. And when, when like, for example, Weston Price, who is this famed dentist, he has a Weston Price Foundation. He went and looked at Aboriginal cultures in Africa, and they were eating, you know, the whole animal, for example, and they would eat a lot of this collagenous regions, these collagenous regions, and it's harder to chew on tendons and ligaments and joint capsules. They're harder to chew, but actually that made their jaw stronger and more rounded, which was associated with healthier dental health, right? Just better dental health in general. Um, and also better breathing. So you actually, when you're challenging your jaw like that, although it can be uncomfortable, just like exercise, you know, it can be a little uncomfortable, but doing it from time to time, and you might have to start small so you don't get a cramp in your jaw or anything like that, but challenging your jaw muscles, uh, just kind of like exercise, kind of a continual gradual overload is what the, the principle will use the principle of overload and exercise where you're just kind of gradually making yourself more and more uncomfortable then your jaw muscles are going to get stronger. Your mouth's going to get more rounded and actually improves uh, your breathing patterns, which reduces your risk of sleep disordered breathing when you're sleeping at night. So sleep apnea and different issues like that. So it's not a bad thing, right? Even if it's a little uncomfortable chewing on it, it's actually beneficial for you. You don't want to choke. You know, you want to make sure you're chewing it as well as you can, but doing a little bit of that um, and kind of gradually building up uh, to a certain certain level is actually very, very healthy for your, your jaw, your breathing, um, and your sleep quality as well. Man, I got to do that a little bit more. You're inspiring me here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> in America, we're eating, you know, soft, super palatable foods, right? In, in westernized first world countries, we try to make everything super easy. 
to digest. And there's a time and a place for that. And we just talked about coming off the fast, somebody right. that maybe has digestive compromise. There's definitely, it's a great thing that we have foods that are very, very easy to break down and digest. But the reality is we either use it or we lose it. And our jaw is actually a very, very powerful muscle. And if we're not using that, we're going to lose that strength and that can affect other areas of our body.